Hello, today I'm going to show how to write an indicator that changes color. So this is a line where if I'm in a particular mode, then it's one color and as it changes the mode, it goes to a different color. The line I'm going to be drawing, it's a very simple indicator and maybe not highly valuable as an indicator, but I'm showing the techniques here. This line will be the midpoint of two moving averages. And when the fast moving average is above the slow moving average, I'll be showing it as a green line. And when the fast moving average is below the slow moving average, I will show this line as a red line. So it'll kind of be a trend indicator. I'll just drag it onto the chart here. It's called midpoint MA. By default, I'm setting this to a fast moving average of a simple MA 10 period on the closing price and the slow moving average is a 50 period simple moving average on the closing price. Say OK. And there's the line. If I just hide the bars, it might be a little bit easier to see. So you can see I've got a red line here in what was intended to be a downtrend and then it changes to a green line for an uptrend, back to a red line, green line and so on. I'll add the two moving averages so that you can see what's happening more clearly. Now I've got the white dotted line is the fast moving average and the yellow dotted line is the slow moving average. And you can see that when the fast is below the slow, I have a red line. And when fast is above the slow, I have the green line. And at the points where they cross, the line changes from red to green and green to red. So today I'm going to be showing how you would write this indicator with the red and the green alternating colors. This is part of my series on basic techniques for writing indicators, expert advices, and general coding. I have an earlier video that shows the basics of writing an indicator, so I won't be going through a lot of that in detail. If you haven't already seen that and you're not familiar with writing an indicator, you should see that earlier video. There will be a link in the description to that video. But today I'm going to be focusing on the technique for creating this alternating color line. This video is for MetaTrader 4. There is a separate video for MetaTrader 5, and I'll also leave a link in the description for the MetaTrader 5 video. Let's jump into the code now and see how this works. Now I have the MetaTrader 4 editor open, and here on the left I've got the ATR channel that I created previously, and then the midpoint MA. All I've done is take a copy of this ATR channel, all the files inside that, copied it, renamed the folder to midpoint MA, and then I've renamed the two files inside that to midpoint MA. And I've got them open here. This is the ATR channel that we had last time. And now the midpoint MA, it's exactly the same. I've made no further changes so far. If you didn't see the first video where I showed how to create an indicator, a basic indicator, and I used the ATR channel as an example, see that because all I'm going to be doing today is modifying the ATR channel to turn it into a two color indicator. So I'm not going to be going through all of the detail of how to create the indicator in the first place. So I've started here with the ATR channel and just renamed it. All I'll do here is change that name. And the simple function for this is just the midpoint between two moving averages. So I don't want to confuse this video with a complex algorithm. This is just taking two moving averages and the simple midpoint of those two. And then I'm going to draw this as a colored indicator that shows green if the fast moving average is above the slow moving average and red if the fast moving average is below the slow moving average. Now the first change I'm going to make, the ATR indicator had three lines. It had a midpoint and an upper and a lower line. I'm going to keep this main line because that's going to have the value of this indicator, whether it's in an uptrend or a downtrend. The value is going to be the same all the way through. And this gives you, in case you want to use something like iCustom, it gives you a single buffer that you can interrogate on this indicator that just gives you the value of the indicator. It won't tell you if the indicator is an uptrend or a downtrend, but if you just want to get the value from it, then this main line, which will be buffer number zero, is always going to be there. But I also don't want to draw this on the screen because I'm drawing the red and the green lines, depending if we're in a down or an uptrend. So first thing I can do, I can remove the color because I don't need to have a color if I'm not drawing the indicator. And then instead of draw line, I'm just going to change that to draw none. Now, when you first open up an indicator, you get the input screen and you can set the properties of these lines. You can override this draw line there if you want to. So you can display this line, but I'm just not going to bother here in the defaults. And I also don't need a width if I'm not drawing the line. I am leaving the name here as main because that shows up in the data window. Now, 
to draw a line that has two colors, I can't actually do that. I can't draw a single indicator line that has two different colors. What I have to do is draw two different lines and then hide one or the other depending which line I want to show. So I'm going to be drawing a green line when I'm in an uptrend and a red line when I'm in a downtrend and hide the other line. So to do that, I still need two additional indicators and one of these is going to be the uptrend line and one is going to be the downtrend line. For the uptrend, I'm just going to change that to green. Uh, rather than upper, I'll change it to up. So this is an uptrend. Uh, I'll keep that as a style solid. And for this, I'll change this to red. Change that to down. And style solid. So now I have three buffers, one that will simply hold values but will not draw, and one that will draw a green line and one that will draw a red line. And the next change, I have two moving averages for this indicator. So where for the ATR I had one moving average and an ATR, now I have two moving averages. Let me just replace this. So I have the fast moving average and the slow moving average. The inputs for them are the same but the fast moving average has a shorter number of bars. Uh, I'm just using a mode SMA by default. You can change this to EMA. They don't have to both be the same. They don't both have to use price close. This is just what I've chosen as the defaults. I'm still drawing three lines, so I still need three sets of buffers to hold the data, but I'll just change the name. So that's buffer up and this is buffer down. Here in on init, I still have mode main, mode upper and mode lower but I'll change the names of these again because I need to match these buffer variables. So that's buffer up and that's buffer down. Now I'm using mode upper and mode lower because they're inbuilt enums. You might want to change these and create your own enums and call them mode up and mode down, but I'm just using these because they already exist. On calculate where most of the work happens, I still have this check to know how many bars I'm going to calculate. But now inside this loop, I'm going to initialize both of the up and down buffers to an empty value just so that they're already hidden. And then I'll set the value on them if they're meant to be shown. So that will take care of hiding the buffer. And now I'm going to capture the values of those two moving averages and calculate the midpoint. So I simply declare these variables, double fast, slow, and MA. And fast is the moving average using the fast bars and method and applied price. And slow is the IMA using the slow MA bars method and applied price. And the arguments to those are both I because I'm getting bar number I value. And then because this is a simple midpoint of those two moving averages, the actual MA value that I'm using is just fast plus slow divided by two. And now because I'm calculating the value here as MA, I don't need to make a call to the IMA here. I just say buffer main I equals MA, which is this calculated value. I'll use that with a semicolon. Just add a space there. There is no channel width to calculate. But now I need a conditional statement to determine whether I'm going to fill in a value for the buffer up and the buffer down. So I'll get rid of these old values that were here. And here I'm saying if the fast is above the slow, then the buffer up for bar number I gets a value which is the same as buffer main I. I could have simply said MA, but I'm choosing to use buffer main I. And if fast is not greater than slow, which also includes cases where they're equal, then buffer down I is equal to buffer main I. So in this way, I'm first initializing buffer up and buffer down to have an empty value, which will cause them not to be displayed. And then if fast is greater than slow, I'm putting a value into buffer up. And if fast is not greater than slow, or fast is less than or equal to slow, then buffer down gets a value. And that's all I need to create a two color indicator. And it's as simple as saying I have two different indicators and I'm just going to show one or the other. 
Now, if you're using iCustom to get the values from this, I've said you already have buffer main where you can get the value, but if you want to know if this is an uptrend or a downtrend, you need to query both the buffer up and the buffer down and then determine which of those has the empty value and that will tell you whether you're in an uptrend or a downtrend. So that's how you deal with indicators that have multiple buffers and one has a value and the other does not, depending on the trend. Let me just compile that. And now I'll just go back to MetaTrader 4 and show how this appears on screen and show you a small visual impact. So here is MetaTrader 4. I have the midpoint MA indicator on screen with the candles. Let me just remove the candles so that you can see more easily. So I have the green line when we're in an uptrend and the red line in a downtrend. And you can see there's a small gap here where the lines change. There's no information lost in that gap. The green line is simply ending in the middle of a bar and in the middle of the next bar, visually, where it's drawn on screen, we begin the red line. And the red line ends in the middle of the bar and then the green line begins in the middle of the bar where we transition to the uptrend. It's purely visual, no data missing. You can only get the values on these bars. You can't actually query a value in between these points because there's no bar there. That's just the gap in between. But if you want to fix this visually, you can do so, but at the expense of being able to easily query and determine whether you're in an uptrend or a downtrend with iCustom. So I'll just show back in the code how you can hide this gap. And the gap happens simply because at one stage I've got a value in, say, buffer up, and at the very next bar I have a value in buffer down and an empty value in buffer up. So MetaTrader simply stops drawing buffer up at the point where it stops having values. To fill the gap, what I'm going to need to do is extend the buffer that I'm closing out. So here where I'm putting a value in buffer up, if this is the first time that I'm putting a value into buffer up, then I want to extend buffer down. And here where I'm putting a value into buffer down, if this is the first time I'm putting a value into buffer down, then I want to add one more column to buffer up, just to fill that gap in between. So I'm adding this statement. First, I'm doing a check to make sure that I'm not trying to address a value. So if I'm at the very left of the bars that I have, I can't look at the bar before that. So this quick test, if i is less than rates total minus one, that means that there is a bar to the left of the bar I'm working on. And buffer up i plus one is equal to empty value. So if buffer up i plus one is an empty value, then that means the, this is the first time that I've tried to place a value into buffer up, or it's the first time since the last time it transitioned away. So given this is the first bar where I'm adding that value, I simply say buffer down i is equal to buffer main i, which will place it at the same value. So all I'm doing is extending this buffer down. And now I can do the same here. The same test for i to make sure that I'm not at the far left. But here I'm checking that buffer down i plus 1 is equal to empty value. And if it is, then that means this is the first value that I'm placing into buffer down. And so I'm going to extend buffer up i and give that the same value. This will close out the gap visually. But if you were to interrogate this with i custom, then at this point where we're changing from one to the other, both buffers will have a value. So I prefer to leave the gap there, but if you want to close it up for visual reasons, this is how you would do it. And let me compile that. There's no errors there. I'll switch back to MetaTrader. And now you can see that there is no gap where we transition from green to red and red to green. I'll put it back again because I actually don't like that. I prefer to be able to interrogate this with iCustom and I can live with that little visual issue. So that's the end for this second in my series of writing indicators where I've covered a two color indicator. Uh, in the next in this series, I'll move on to showing how to put indicators in the second window and some of the things you need to consider when you want to do that. I hope you've enjoyed this. If it's been useful, click the like and remember to click subscribe to see more of our videos. Thank you for watching.